Hi and welcome to this week's video. We're going to be doing some more fuselage work so let's see what we get up to. Come on then. So I just want to point out uh, I haven't got the diagonals in going across here yet I'm, and uh, I have at station 6 but not station 7 or between station 7 and 8. So if you actually look I can actually flex, no flex is happening further up the, uh, the fuselage but here I can actually, even though this is all glued and stabilised and that's glued so this can still flex. So we'll come back to it once I've got the diagonals bonded in and they've, and they've uh, set but uh, the important thing at this moment in time is when you're putting those diagonals in it's very easy to put a little bit of pressure on there and get this out of line so make sure that you've got it absolutely square while you're doing the assembly and uh, gluing up. So there's a little bit of detail I've got blocks going in here uh, these are gusseted effectively by the side skins uh, block in there just because we've got the diagonal pushing back we've got a gusset going across as you've seen previously gusset on this side here for this section Probably easy to show you over there, like that. They're all done, and then on the top here, we've got the gussets, and they haven't really got the block work in. It needs to go in underneath here. It's easy with the, uh, the whole thing turned up the other way. So now we've got the uh, the diagonals in place. Uh, just to show you how stiff it is now. It's not <laughs> compared to how it was before that. It, uh, there's no no movement there at all uh, I'll go into some detail I'll try and uh, draw up um, something to sort of show you how, how these gussets are sort of set up um, so you have an idea for, so they don't show too much <coughs> they will show but they, they don't show, so they won't show too much with the uh, the covering going over the bottom of the aircraft okay to explain gussets uh, how far you need to take them across a cross member as you saw on my longer ones they're not going to the outside edge so what I was taught is if you've got a gusset uh, of a particular thickness we'll make it square like that if we call that thickness there uh, T then the amount that needs to be attached to the member should be a minimum of 4t so so that would that distance there would need to be at least 4t uh, to get the, the, the bond strength and then you can taper the uh, gusset down by going from 2t in two times the thickness in down to uh, just short of the last lamination so if it's five ply just needs one lamination if it's three ply it's just one lamination you must, don't touch that last lamination whatever that happens to be so as long as you've got more than 2t going across this direction here before you start the taper You've got at least one complete uh, lamination and the bond area is at least four times the uh, the thickness then if you did the, the test for what uh, the gussets are supposed to do the gusset would be breaking here it wouldn't debond itself so that's what uh, i've done actually i tend to go more than the four times the, temp the, the, the thickness uh, whenever I, I bond, bond these on uh, so generally slightly more than four times the thickness and uh, you know the taper there I usually leave more than two times these are the minimums uh, for it to have the right amount of strength hopefully that explains it okay there's a view on the plan uh, where they're sort of showing uh, their eighth half round gussets which uh, they supply in the kit uh, they've only gone to halfway across I, I would be going two thirds away across that the, the longer on member but uh, it just shows that it's not madness to be uh, 
only going part the way across the Longeron with a gusset. So here's the uh, the floor bonded into position, weights to make sure the ply is down on the cross members and then because of the tightness of the, uh, the, the radius going around here I've put these planks going right the way across and clamped them down and then this is taking it back two inches from the rear spar carry through position and you see that I've tapered it down uh, effectively down two of the plies so it's quite shallow here uh, and that will uh, probably have a little bit of bolts or something just to fill it in um, and this will be cut back and along once I've got the rear sp uh, spar carry through bonded into place uh, the rear spar carry through is sort of there but it's just down because it's not being bonded into place at this moment in time because we need to get that exact position and we can get this off the jig and the wings put on so uh, I'll deep clamp all this lot and go around the edge here with a an edge router piece uh, once it's all cured okay that's the end of this week's video uh, not got as much as I'd like to get done never do uh, we've got the all the block working on the top longerons not all of it in on the bottom longerons but got all the gussets in on the bottom longerons but not on the top so until I turn the, uh, the can turn the fuselage over which will probably be next week I, I can then get those bits completed we have got the base in here the, the uh, lower uh, fuselage floor panel in which is nice and uh, the next step that I'd like to get done is to get uh, the uh, rear spar carry through bonded into place uh, then I can trim this as required and I can do some more work elsewhere but we'll see what we can do that's weather dependent so keep yourself fit and healthy catch you next time bye now thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up you can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can remember go fly and feel the sky